Hi, I'm Dan with Family White TV, and people ask me all the time, hey, how'd you make your screen? Well, that's what this video is about. So here's the frame for my screen. It is made to these dimensions. So the uh, first top crossbar here is 12 feet wide or 120 inches. And the pillars on the side are 56 and 3 quarter inches tall. And that makes this a 2.35 to 1 widescreen letterbox, cinemascope, constant image height screen. So these corners here, I have a couple of angle brackets on each corner, and I had to kind of cant them a little bit so that they would uh, fit in there just right. Also, I have these two braces, one that goes on each side here. What this does is once I get the material on there, the screen does flex a little bit. So I have these cross braces here to make sure to hold that steady. Now all around the screen, and as you can see on these cross braces here, there is a basically black velvet that I got, just put on there with thumbtacks. And then the important thing to remember is this does not go in between the screen, but it has to go behind the screen. And so what I did with that is I have some washers that go between here and the screen so that this does not touch the surface of the spandex screen. If it did touch the surface, then you would be able to see it through the screen a little bit because it'd make a little bit of an indentation. So when I made this, I had to make sure that this was back far enough that these braces are also not touching the screen. The braces are lined with black velvet so that they don't reflect any light back to the projector so that they are invisible in there. But the one downside to these is I do get some clean spots on my screen where these are. The reason for this is because behind here I have the air intake for my house's HVAC system. So the screen is essentially a huge filter. But if you're not going to have an HVAC system behind your screen, you won't have to worry about that. Now this wood that I got here, I think there's a label on it somewhere. All right. Uh, it says mixed wood made in Sweden. Uh, number two, better crown, one by four by 10, S4S, whatever. Now this wood I got here, I got this from Home Depot. So I got 10 foot long straight sections and the sections on the side, which of course are cut to size. And of course I did have to pick through, make sure that I got the perfectly straight pieces so that I would have a screen that is nice and straight and square and everything. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is. Uh, maybe if I look up this uh, barcode online, I might find out. Yeah, well, not even Google knows what this stuff is. But I did get it from Home Depot. So look for some straight wood from Home Depot. Uh, this is one by four. Now for the masking on the side, I have these panels right here. Basically black velvet on the front and a little bit of a frame on the back here. Uh, this isn't quite as straight as it could be, but... So glued into the wood here, there are some neodymium magnets, one on the top, one on the bottom. And that mates with uh, screws within the screen that are uh, underneath the black velvet. And that will hold this in place when uh, I have the screen kind of closed down a little bit for 16 by 9 viewing. So this isn't the straightest thing in the world, but uh, hey, it, it works well enough. Now, of course, also on the surround, I have, this isn't black velvet, but this is just black spandex. But it, what it does is when the room is nice and dark, between the uh, black velvet on the screen and this black spandex here, it makes the picture just seem like it's uh, just coming out of the blackness, because that's what you want with the, the picture. You want to have a picture that is just there, and you don't see anything around that. Now what this black velvet also helps do is a lot of times the projector is not mounted perfectly or if I'm uh, watching a two th or if I'm watching a moving 2.35 to 1 I have the black bars that my projector is still projecting bleeding out over the top and bottom of the screen. Well this black velvet here will absorb any light there so that even though there is light striking it it's not going to be visible during normal viewing. So let's go ahead and put some spandex on this now. So for my screen material, I have, this is basically matte milliskin spandex. You can get it from Spandex World. There's other places you can get it. Just Google matte milliskin and you'll find this kind of spandex. I have gray and I also have white. Gray goes behind, white goes in front. The reason for the two layers of spandex is you can see a little bit of light through this. So if you just project onto one layer, you're gonna have a lot of light going through the screen and anything shiny behind the screen, like a speaker, you might see reflected back. So 
add a second layer so that uh, you reflect a little bit more light back and so that less light gets through and you won't notice anything shiny behind the screen. I haven't ever noticed anything behind the screen using this two layer method. Now, the reason I'm using this spandex is because it's an excellent acoustically transparent material because obviously I have my speakers behind my screen. However, if you're building a screen and you don't plan to have speakers behind your screen, you can use other materials. A good DIY material is blackout cloth, which you can generally get from Joanne Fabrics, Hancock Fabrics, places like that. Blackout cloth is a type of cloth that you normally line curtains with. It's excellent at blocking light, but the white side is also excellent at reflecting light back to a projector. From there, some screen manufacturers will also sell you raw materials so that you can get an actual screen material. I don't do that because my kids are still a bit young and I have pets and I don't want to risk losing a $3,000 screen to an incident involving a young kid who doesn't really know any better or a pet that has separation anxiety like this dog did. Fortunately, that screen wasn't very expensive. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and stretch this screen out over the screen. For that, I'm just using a series of thumbtacks. So I'll start with several tacks in a corner. That way, as you're pulling the screen nice and tight, the corner doesn't come out because just one tack is very likely to come out. But if you use about three tacks, then it's not gonna pull out on you. Now regarding screen materials, some people will do a couple of layers of white. I think this uh, gray behind there might add a little bit to the black level. Or you could have the gray up in front. What the gray up in front will do is it's going to lower the black floor of the projector a little bit. So if you have a projector like mine that doesn't have the greatest black floor in the world, you can get a little bit better blacks. But of course, the image is going to appear just a tiny bit gray. I personally like the white side, but your mileage may vary. It's your theater, your preference. Best thing you can do is maybe experiment around and see what works best for you and your setup. Not if it shows up or not, but there is some wrinkles in this material. I just washed it. Uh, I took my screen down to wash it because it gets dusty after a little while. And so we actually took everything out of here and we went ahead and cleaned everything up because this room smells a bit dusty. So we took this down, cleaned up behind here. I put this in and washed it and now it's out. There is some wrinkles with it, but don't worry because we're going to take care of those wrinkles. So as I go along here, the process is and it's nice and easy with the spandex but with blackout cloth it's a little bit more difficult but basically you just tack it down on one end tack it down on the other end then stretch it out and just keep tacking on opposite ends it's kind of like putting a tire on the car oh whoops i did not stretch that bottom corner so let's go ahead and do that but basically by going to the opposite corners you're making sure that it's nice and evenly tensioned all along otherwise if you go from one side to another you're going to end up with a whole lot of slack on one side of the screen or things just aren't going to look right. Just take your time and go along. If you need to, you can get a tack hammer. And at first this isn't too hard, but uh, it starts to hurt after a few. Okay, now we'll go ahead and put these cross beams back on here. And yep, I can see that these holes are not quite lining up. So yeah, these braces are needed to keep the screen nice and square or rectangular. Okay, so there's a little bit of craziness where the uh, things are. So we just got to adjust a little bit. You know, sometimes there's just going to be not quite perfection there. What we can do is maybe apply some more strategic tacks at just the right locations. All right, now to hang it up. So in order to hang it up, actually, I'll show you what I did back here. So what I've done back here is there's these... Uh, I didn't have wood longer than, I mean, you can get 18 foot long wood, but I couldn't get that home in the van. So basically I doubled up eight foot sections and I laminated them, bolted them together. That way I have wood long enough in order to get all the way across. 
So built this simple frame here and then it's screwed in four locations into the studs in the wall just to, I mean, it's not load bearing or anything. All it has to do is hold the screen and that's about it. And then on the back here, I do have four screws that screw into the frame of the screen itself. And there we are. All nice and solidly mounted. Of course, the first time you do that, you'll want to have a level to make sure your screen is perfectly level. Now, actually, I actually don't see any wrinkles in this. So that's pretty good. Normally there are some, there's going to be some wrinkles in there, especially if you just get it brand new. So what you can do to de-wrinkle a screen, and I have another video on this, but basically you get a hair dryer and you just kind of go over the whole screen with a hair dryer and it'll take the wrinkles right out. So now we just got to fix this mess down here. And of course down here is more spandex. And there we are. It's all nice and hung up. And there it is, a 2.35 to 1 widescreen. And with the masking panels in place, 16 by 9. So if this video was helpful for you, I've got several other videos that are popping up right now that you can uh, take a look at. So go ahead and take a look at those. And after uh, several months of not posting videos, I'm hoping to start posting videos on a bit more of a regular basis now. So uh, be watching out for those. So down with Finally Light TV, and thanks for watching. Oh, and there's subscribe buttons and stuff like that down there too.